Point clouds are getting too much attention because of the self-driving industry. You might have seen a lot of sensor above self-driving cars. They are producing point clouds through 3D LiDAR and the depth cameras. So let's start understanding how these point clouds are processed and how cars are moving in an environment with voxelizing and segmentation. In ROS2 Learner's repository, we have a point cloud perception package that we were working previously. I have created a point clouds directory. I might upload this point cloud as well. Let's take a look what this point cloud is and how does it looks like. PCL viewer, cloud PCD. This is going to bring up our point cloud that I produced using our tab map. And you can see it's the same turtle bot world. It might seem to you as an image, but if you zoom into it, you will see that there are a lot of points. These all points are actually containing XYZ and RGB values as well and some other fields as well. You can see there is green color on these points as well and this is black color. This is not an empty space. Okay. We are going to be performing a lot of things to this point cloud. Let me close and let's move towards our code. We'll start by creating two shared pointers, one to load the cloud and the second one to output the cloud into. As our point cloud is going to be read from a file and it is going to be written after downsampling, so we need to import a reader as well as a writer. First, let's set the path to the file and then we will read the cloud. I am going to provide an absolute path to our cloud. And that has to be a standard string. Now we provide path to the cloud reader. And we have to also define by dereferencing our shade pointer that we created here so that it reads the cloud and it put it into the dereference shade pointer of point cloud to type. Next, we need to write our cloud after processing and next we need to write our cloud after performing the voxel grid filter and writing is done using the cloud writer that we created, giving the path, defining the dereference shade pointer and vector zero quaternion identity and compression to be false. This is going to save our cloud as in world coordinates and there is no rotation and its vectors is set to be zero. So our writing and reading is done. What we need to do is to apply the voxel grid. So first we need to create an object of a voxel grid class and it is inside of our PCL library. The template we are going to be using is point cloud 2 because I cloud type is point cloud 2 the object name is going to be voxel filter there are only three things the setup input cloud set leaf size and apply the filter and dereference the shade pointer to save the whole cloud so input cloud is obviously going to be the main cloud that we have read for the leaf size we are just going to provide a random value 0 0.05 for x, y and z. These three values we are going to be discussing later by making changes into it and understanding the effect of this voxel filter. For now this seems to be fine but the problem is this is going to read the cloud and we don't want to override the cloud using the same path so we are going to add a name to the cloud for reading and writing explicitly to visualize them individually. As we have to add the name as a string inside of the writing and reading functions, we are going to call it voxelized. Let's bring our terminal. We need to open up in our workspace, perform call conveyed. ROS2 run point cloud perception and voxeling. This is the name of the node that I have written. It provided an output. Let's see, we have the PCD file. Voxelized PCD is there. To visualize our point cloud, PCL viewer and voxelized. Press enter. And here, if you can see, 
this was the same point cloud in shape and appearance but this time points have been reduced you can understand it in a way that if i just run cloud it is more darker but if i open up the voxelized version it is quite dim and the number of points are decreased we can also add some print statements stdc out source cloud points which is going to give us the total number of points for our main point cloud that is going to be done with cloud and access its width multiplied by the clouds member height this is also going to be done for voxelized cloud and we can understand the difference between the number of points perform a call can build and running the node is going to tell us the source point cloud had 486,000 points while the voxelized cloud points are only 90,000. So there is a gross difference in both of these but the shape is kept the same. So in our algorithm the main thing is set leaf size which here we have defined an XYZ to be 0 0.05 that defines to be a voxel as a cube and it is going to be limiting things on these three values. If we change these values, for example, I make them 1.2, 1.2 in X, Y and 1.2 in Z and now I perform call can build and running the same node. This time you can see only 27 points are being created. So you have to understand the relation. The bigger the values, the bigger the voxel criteria, which reduces the total number of the point cloud. So what is voxels? It is a process of reducing the number of points in a point cloud. As the name suggests, it's a big cloud. A lot of points that are representing six different values normally XYZ and RGB for each single point and one shape contains a lot of thousands and thousands of registrations that are happening so what we do for processing and extracting information we group them by averaging them and creating a voxel for that and that voxel is represented by an average number so processing is reduced this is represented as voxel filtering so how it's done let's take a look let's create another node and call it planar seg i'm going to bring the whole code in cmake list we have to make the additions planar seg and we have to add it into targets our node is ready the process is going to be almost the same so before starting the process we are going to eliminate the voxel grid we are going to apply it on exactly the whole point cloud we are going to be reading a point cloud 2 writing and reading as well to the same paths but this time it is going to be named as plain seg so we can differentiate between the previous point clouds the main process is going to be happening here where we apply the planner segmentation and interestingly as we have discussed it is going to be about extracting the points and we don't need to print out with how much points we are having in our point cloud so planner segmentation as from these libraries it is quite simple we utilize the main pcl sac segmentation and we provide it to have a template of point cloud 2 then we name the object to be plain seg and this has to be of pcl this plain seg is going to be utilized this plain seg is going to be utilized to first set the model type and then the method it is going to be using for the segmentation these are the two main things and afterwards we need to define a threshold which is going to check if this specific point is going to be inside of the plane or not after these configuration we are going to give it the input cloud which in our case is going to be the cloud and we will say segment it and provide us some inliers and the coefficients these two are the things that we are going to get as an output 
And so we have to define the inlines and coefficients with their specified data types as well. The model type that we are going to be using is basic PCL SAC model plane. And we have a lot of options as well that we can perform segmentation on. The method type is going to be PCL SAC RANSEC. This seems to be ready as we are getting the inliers, but we have to put these inliers into a form of cloud. For that, we have to define another extract indices PCL class into an object. Extract indices, the data type, the template it is going to be using is point cloud2 extract indices. With this object, we are going to get the whole cloud by utilizing the inliers from the main source cloud. That might be confusing, but let's see. In our scenario, this is not going to be the voxel cloud. We are going to replace it with plain seg cloud, which we defined in the previous code. Input cloud is obviously the main cloud, the source cloud. We have the indices as inliers. We are going to be directly passing the pointer and set negative is set to be false. If I set it to be true, we are going to get things other than the plane that we have i'll show you the code seems to be fine only this remaining terminator is there now before performing call can build we can simplify things for our algorithms and this is very interesting thing to understand by looking into the documentation here i have been utilizing the pcl point cloud 2 class of pcl now i am going to create a special type of pointer to the data structure of pcl by creating a point cloud class and then using a template of PCL point XYZ as I just want to have the point XYZ in our point cloud we don't need to deal with the RGB right now so that is why I'm leaving this point cloud to type for the cloud so we have to copy and paste it here as well similarly I'll do the same for the play seg cloud so after we have given this new template of the class we are going to replace the previous one as well and we have to also define it in the writing process this time uh, we are going to leave this identity at zero definition of the vectors. So let's perform call can build in our workspace. And here we are going to put ROS2 run. And this is going to be planar seg. Press enter. It has performed planar segmentation. Its output is going to be really interesting. This time I don't want to visualize the voxel let's run the plane seg press enter and here you can see a very amazing plane has been extracted out of our whole point cloud and there are small points inside of it we can perform voxel grid as well so what i'm going to do is to set it to be true to see the effect that we get other than the plane or not the steps are the same perform call can build run the node after compilation and now let's run the plane segmentation here you can see the plane has been extracted out of it because of setting this specific extract this is set negative to true and other than the plane we have everything in this point cloud we have removed the rgb information we can also get it back but for now to make things easy we understood how this segmentation works let's first see end layers coefficients outliers and distance threshold these parameters are the most important in this segmentation end layers are the points that are really close to the model that we have defined in our plane model 
and our point cloud it matches the model with the point cloud and the things that are really close they are considered as inliers and it gives us the indices the next step is outliers which are away and this closeness to the point cloud and the model is defined with the parameter distance to threshold so greater the threshold meaning far away the points can be so outliers might come into inliers as well if we increase a lot of parameter distance threshold the one important thing is the coefficients that we receive are optimized when it is fitting the model iteratively the ransack algorithm into point cloud so if we make changes appropriately it is going to affect in a positive way the main parameter for the segmentation part is when we are performing the segmentation of the points for example this is actually telling us that the distance from plane that we have extracted to any other point so set distance threshold is an important parameter that controls major things in this segmentation it is actually defining that we have extracted the plane and the points that are greater than this threshold 0.1 they are going to be considered as outliers not the inliers so let's perform calc and build and see what this actually means for visualization i'm going to bring both of the clouds the main cloud and the pink one is our planar segmented clouds set to two meaning the other part so you can see there is some sort of distance from the ground to the upper plate the distance is 0.1 so points that are inside this distance 0.1 are considered to be the part of the plane this is going to become more apparent if i say false that is going to just bring up the plane and now i perform call can build again and i perform this cross running of the node and this time i just print out the plane segmentation and here you can see that all of the points inside of this 0.1 distance are also considered as the plane and they are segmented so distance threshold is a very important parameter that you can tune to get your things extracted the way you want if i reduce it to 0.01 then the results are going to be the same that we were getting earlier that is just going to be extracting only the required plane that we wanted and nothing else see 0.01 distance to the plane this plane extracted is going to be taken out of the plane. so you have gone through processing of a simple point cloud that was static and very much detailed regarding the environment in autonomous cars the point clouds are different as you can experience with kitty data set or 3d lidars points are less as compared to this dense point cloud but the operations are same you have to understand how point cloud is loaded applied some processing algorithms how you can segment things out of it if you understood the basics you can move to the next video which is about how you can extract cylinders out of this so you get more understanding how to get more interesting things out of point cloud